Hey everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. How are you guys doing on this Saturday morning? Uh, we'll see if we have any takers. I see we have two people here joining us. Uh, this should be a, a fun little uh, live stream today. Love doing landscape stuff, especially small little landscape drawings. Hey Paul, how are you? Ismael, how are you? Thank you so much for um, joining me here today. Yeah, the point of today's uh, short little live session is about, uh, oh, let me lower my volume on my computer. Yep, okay, cool. I'm doing good today, I'm doing good, feeling good. Hey, Ileana, how are you? Ileana, that last piece that you uploaded in the Critique Gallery was great. I, I really love the way that you did the, uh, the house in the background with uh, the non-contrasting values and uh, the softer edges. That was pretty phenomenal. So the Critique Gallery is really helping you. Definitely keep posting there. Your artwork is improving. Hey, Aura, uh, how are you? And uh, we have Kai is visiting with us today. Michael Joel, thank you so much. And I can get my head out of the, uh, the, the screen here. There we go. I love looking at the top of my head. Nothing better than that. Isn't it beautiful? Um, C. Morsha, how are you? Carmela. Nancy, good morning. Moonchild. I'm doing good. Yeah, you got it, Ileana. Are, are, you're still... Um, well, I won't say where you're from. I, I don't want to give anything away, but I know you're from up in Canada there. Uh, okay, so uh, I figured... Uh, let me just kind of give you a quick little recap of uh, what we're going to do here today, and we'll just dive into it. Okay. Um, blessed sellers. Thank you for joining. Uh, today's live stream is about uh, incorporating motion in your landscape drawings, okay? And as I start to sketch this out, you can see I have a photo of, of a landscape drawing there. I want to talk to you all about the importance of using your own photo reference, okay? Uh, how important that is and how important it is for you to either A, use your iPhone or your Android device, or just if you have an old camera, a digital camera using it, and, and actually using the photography as a, a huge part of your uh, creative process. A lot of people will go online and, and look for photos online, and that's great. I do that too. But it's also extremely important for you to start incorporating a camera into your creative process. Okay, so we have... Uh, Andres here from Montreal, Canada. I think we have two people from Montreal, Canada here this morning. Um, Michelle Lacanto is here. Okay, I'll have to watch later, but I just want to say hello. Thank you, Michelle, for joining. I really do appreciate that. Okay, I'm glad that to hear that you're back at work. That's really, really important. So let's let's dive into this now. I'm I'm trying something different here uh, today. So what I'm using is this, uh, I've never really used this paper. This is the first time. Hey, why not use it for the first time on the live stream? It's this Stonehenge, uh, Stonehenge pad. It has these assorted like light colors and it's from Legion. I bought it on Amazon and uh, it's pretty cool. It's a small little pad here. What, what size are we? Uh, it looks to be like a nine by 12. And uh, if I can kind of flip through it, yeah, there's these just cream colors. Uh, hi, Aurora. There's like a gray in, in the back, and then there's the one that I'm using, which is more of like a yellow beige. So I figured I'd try something a little different. I wanted to have fun with the white charcoal, and a little bit of toned paper uh, does that white charcoal really, really good. Um, boy, that's a tough one to say. Random 17, I'm going to say. Welcome. Okay, cool. Frankie J, good morning from Wheeling, West Virginia. All right, let's get started with this landscape drawing. So the first thing, and I, I'm going to talk to you guys today about perspective. I'm going to talk to you about shading. I'm going to talk to you about contrast, leading the, the person's 
I, around the page, I want to talk to you about manipulating values, a lot, a lot of little details that I've talked about before. But what you have to remember when you're doing your artwork and you're creating your own imagery is that you don't need to know a hundred different things. You really need to master about 10 to 12 things. And if you can master those 12 to 10 things, you're going to be doing really, really good. Random. I like that. That's easier for me. I always come up with nicknames for people in my classroom. Wow, we have Montreal. We have Quebec. Yeah, I love uh, my... my, my uh, I'll close with this little story, and then we'll start drawing. Uh, when I was growing up here on eastern Long Island, I, I lived in the middle of Long Island when I was growing up, hockey was the thing for me uh, as a high school student, and I played hockey all the time. And my friend, Pete, who lived across the street... Uh, was into making hockey equipment, like making goalie pads, making gloves. And, and he used to like put all this extra padding in my hockey equipment. To make a long story short, he sold his business that of making hockey pads and stuff. And uh, he moved to Montreal, Canada and kind of retired at an early age. <laughs> so yeah, that's such a good story. I, I, he actually made the goalie pads for the goalie Tom Barrasso who won the Stanley Cup with his goalie pads. And this was a kid that grew up right across the street from me. Pretty really uh, awesome stuff. Pete, I haven't seen Pete in a very long time. So what I like to do, let's, let's get started here because I, I, I want you guys to learn. And you're going to not learn by me telling these uh, old uh, stories. So the first thing I like to do, so what I noticed right away with this paper uh, is that it has a little bit of a different feel than my Strathmore paper, which is right underneath. It would be nice if I was on the screen. Okay, so this is not bad. So this is a good size. Chuck, good morning from, wow, we've got Canada, Ottawa, Ontario, Montreal, Quebec. God, I mean, is it my last name? Uh, can somebody say my last name really, really good with a uh, French-Canadian? Uh, it's, it's funny because my dad's side of the family is a little bit of French Canadian, hence the last name. Uh, but my mom is all Italian from Italy. Um, so yeah. So, okay. Border first, border first for me now. Uh, yeah, you got it, Dave D. Thank you. Now, uh, this is a little bit more of closer to a skinnier 16 by 9 rectangle versus the, the rectangle that you see in the photograph is a little bit more 4 by 3. Now, what I like to do when, when I'm planning out my, my landscapes is, uh, first thing is with this one, when I took this photo, I was, I do believe this one, I might have been kneeling, okay? Uh, actually, this, I don't remember. I was kneeling and I was standing. Uh, so I'm going to just immediately put in my horizon line and my horizon line's right in the middle. Okay. Now there are rules with artists. Uh, they have Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. Right across the Long Island Sound for me. Um, a lot of people have rules. I have some rules that I like to follow. Uh, some people say you're never supposed to put something right in the middle. I don't really care about that rule. I put stuff in the middle all the time. I love symmetry. Now, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of my horizon line. Very light pressure on the pencil. Now, I'm just going to bat out these things that I like to think about early on in the mix. So early on in the mix, indoor environments. I'm trying to learn backgrounds indoor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, follow along with me. I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of different things. So the first thing I, I want to uh, say is that we have this tree. There's two trees because there's two cast shadows uh, to the left. And the first thing that you want to do in your landscape drawings is think uh, big in the foreground. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get in that big shape of that tree before I get any value. Now, uh, the next thing is I want, remember when I did the live stream about landscapes a couple of months ago, I talked about the zigzag. So I'm going to zig now with perspective to this other smaller tree or bush or foliage, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to just kind of place this. Notice how I'm just kind of scribbling. I'm not worried about going crazy with it. And, and the concept here is bigger in the foreground, smaller in the midground, even smaller in the background. So this is my zig, that's my perspective line that's going with the lay of the land from this one cast shadow to this next tree. And then I'm gonna zag, all zigzag, I'm gonna zag all the way 
to my background with this kind of Z perspective line to this other little tree here, foliage, whatever you want to call it, over here in the background. So we have our zig and we have our zag, and that creates lots of motion. Okay, so the title of this um, perspective, th this YouTube live stream here today, is um, creating motion in your landscape drawings. So yes, we have that horizon line right in the middle, which is very static, and it doesn't create a lot of motion, but um, yeah, it, it will help you. Hey, sir, my man. Hey, Jean Philippe. Uh, now, there's layers. You want to think about layers with your landscape drawing. So we have this big tree, pine tree, uh, in the foreground. Then we have an intermediate size one in the midground and then a small one in the background. And then you want to think about layers. So I want to put this other layer of foliage that is behind these. And I want to think about this more as like a perspective type thing. So my, I'm going to say that my vanishing point is right in the middle of this landscape. So if I wanted to, that's, that, that's where I think my vanishing point is. And if I want to do some light perspective lines, I, I don't want to screw the thing up. But this would be how I would think about perspective. Just like that. Okay. And so I was, uh, I just showed you guys last week in my live stream about uh, a drawing that I did of a figure, a nude figure in a landscape. And I'm like, you know, I kind of really enjoyed that. I want to do that again. So I started uh, to look for photo reference online. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I looking for photo reference online? I live on Eastern Long Island. I should go out. It's a bright, sunny day. Let me go out in the field. Let me do what I used to do when I was an illustrator and go photograph my own background reference instead of always relying on Google or the stock photography sites. So I went out. Uh, there's an abandoned um, place where they used to make, I think it was F-17s or uh, I, I don't know what planes, but it's Grumman out on Eastern Long Island in Calverton, I think. And it's an abandoned, uh, factory where they used to make warplanes for the air force. And now it's completely abandoned and there's, there's, they don't make planes there anymore, but there are these massive runways that are all like have weeds growing in them. And it's a big, massive area of open space. So I'm like, let me go there. It's open fields. I mean, why am I looking on Google? Let me go and, and let me go photograph my own reference so I can use my camera as a, con Hey Marie, Hey Ash. So I can use my camera as a composition making tool okay hey you live on long island too awesome yeah so this is the old grumman where they i don't uh know exactly what they used to make i think maybe they also made hellcats there uh, this is the grumman on eastern long island and um it's just yeah you can ride your bike on the abandoned runways it's great for walking they have like a walk path and stuff like that it's a little eerie as well on the weekends when you drive through this area i just kind of discovered this like a year ago there's nobody there and there are these old buildings it's, it's really eerie uh there's a lot of abandoned buildings and then the open runway with the weeds growing through it so i'm like let me bring my camera, let me zoom in, let me zoom out, let me see if I can't create an interesting composition. So a lot of people shun photography, okay? But you want to use photography in your creative process before you even get to the sketches. So it's your own, it's your own copyrighted photo that you create and, and you take with, with your own camera, whether it's an iPhone or any camera. I think that'd be really, really cool. Now, you see what I've done here. I've got my vanishing point. Not everything is going to go to my vanishing point, but we've got this other layer of trees behind the midground tree. Okay. And creating these layers is really important in your landscapes. So I'm going to um, make another little layer here. Now you could say, well, oh, you're copying everything. What's the creativity in that? Well, um, yeah, I'm kind of copying this photo, but I could, I'll change things around so I don't copy it 100%. Will Shire UK. Hey, Carol. Uh, so you can see that I'm starting to create these layers. Now, I, I like the photo. That's why I'm copying it. Uh, when I, I walked around and I'm like, I was 
taken all these different pictures and then I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So what you can see here is um, I've got my horizon line. I've got my vanishing point. I have my big tree in the foreground. I have my middle tone tree in the midground. Um, and then I have my small tree in the background. And then I have layers that create depth. Now, what I don't have is the clouds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to manipulate my photo reference, and I want to put that big cloud that you see in the center off to the, the right, okay? And I want my clouds to kind of go the same way in perspective, and I want there to be horizon line clouds over here that are really horizontal. So I'm creating... Not everything needs to go to one vanishing point. You can have multiple vanishing points on one horizon line. So these clouds would be going to a different vanishing point on that one horizon line. So what I've done there very quickly, now this is small, okay? This is a six, roughly six and a half by four inch drawing. I love doing small little landscapes. If I was to do this double the size, it would take me double the time. Now. The next step that you want to do, and, and you should do this in every single drawing that you do, whether it's a portrait drawing, a figure drawing, an interior, a still life, or a landscape. Where is the light coming from? Okay. Where is the light coming from? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this photo. Okay, cool. And uh, so where is the light coming from? And in the sense of a landscape, what time of day is it? Okay, that is really, really valuable for you to ask that question. Where is the light coming from? Now, when I took this photo, let's talk about photography here for a moment. I know this may not be the most exciting thing in terms of me drawing, but this is this is really valuable information that you need to uh, incorporate in your process. So I wanted to do a figure in the landscape. Now, I already had the picture of the model that I took and I had two light sources on the model. And when I was walking around in this big open field, I was looking at where is the sun and remembering where the light was when I photographed my model. So I wanted to take a picture of this landscape with the same light source that I had on my model. So that involved me walking around, looking around, turning my head, and really being conscious of the sunlight. Okay, so the sun... How do you tell where the sun's coming from? Well, very easy. You look at this cast shadow over here. So there's a cast shadow right here. So that tells me that the sun is coming from the left top. Okay, so there's a cast shadow over here. There's a cast shadow over here. And also, you just want to know what time of day it is. Okay, 12 noon, sun's coming right from up above. So it was about 10, 45, 11 o'clock. So there's a little bit of a cast shadow over there. There's a little bit of a cast shadow over here. Okay, so we, we kind of know where the light's coming from. And then you can actually see little cast shadows on the, on the grass. The grass is about 12 inches tall. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start the process of blocking in tone. Okay, so what I want to do here is just put in a middle tone. And I'm shading very, very simply on a diagonal. Okay. Shading on a diagonal, shading on a di diagonal is a very, very fast way to block in tone. Now, you don't want to go super dark immediately. You want to build up your values, okay? I preach this all the time in portrait drawing, figure drawing, everything. Now, I'm going to come over here. Now, there's all different negative spaces. There's the crazy edge that we see here of the foliage. It's the pine needles and all that jazz, but I I'm not going to get into that just yet. First, I just want to block in tone. So for lighting for indoor environments, I would need to think about whether there's a window. Yes, uh, light is, uh, I, I like to say this sentence over and over and over again. Uh, light is magic. And the difference between a piece of artwork that inspires you and one that is just, oh, it's nice, it's pretty, but it's missing something, it's light. Light creates magic, okay? Um, when you're looking out at the sky and it's a cloudy day and everything's gray, it's not as magical as, you know, a sunset when the light's coming down. It's not as magical as a sunrise. 
Okay, so you need to really always think about light and shade. This is just my opinion. You ask 10 other YouTube instructors, uh, what do you think about light? And they can say, they may not have an opinion, maybe they do, but for me, hey Sandy, thanks for joining. Hi, Ling Yu Ma, wow, okay, love it. Uh, so Ling Yu, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we talked a lot about landscape stuff, Ling uh, Yu and myself in the coaching, and uh, this is gonna su probably help you also. So yeah, just think about light and think about shadow because one is not separate from the other. So there's light, shadow, cast shadow. Now, I've got my initial block in for the trees, very soft, it doesn't even look like trees, but it's a block in. Now, I wanna think about the concept of different things have different values. So I'm gonna make a decision. Now, every drawing that you do, you wanna have a key. So you wanna have a dark. So see how quickly I get that dark with this pencil? It's not a problem. You wanna have a middle tone, and you want to have a light. So my light today is going to be the white charcoal. That's my light, okay? Uh, but I'm going to use the charcoal last. It's going to kind of, yeah, I always use it last when I'm working. So I'm going to say to myself, trees are going to be dark, foliage is going to be dark, grass is going to be middle tone, and then it's going to gradate up, and my sky is going to be a light middle tone. The clouds will be where I'll use the white charcoal and the flowers will be where I use the white charcoal. So now we blocked in um, the tone here for the trees with a diagonal pencil stroke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to block in very softly here. So landscapes, this landscape is super soft. I'm just gonna kinda go with the way the grass is growing. So if the grass is growing vertically, I want my pencil strokes to go vertically as well. Now. You might be asking, well, why didn't you do that with the pine trees? Why didn't you do the pencil stroke direction immediately on that? I could have done that, for the, but for the sake of speed, I just wanted to block in on a diagonal. So now we're using these vertical um, pencil strokes just to block in, okay? And they're not going straight up and down. There's all different tilts. And as we start to go to the midground of this landscape, we want our pencil strokes to get shorter to create the optical illusion of distance, okay? And then as we get to the real mid-ground background, we're gonna switch from a vertical pencil stroke to more of a horizontal pencil stroke near the horizon line. Make sense, okay? And now over here, there's those distant pine trees and um, we're gonna go horizontal. So you're seeing, I'm talking about a lot of little uh, tips here today. Uh, would you recommend me to do the black and white versions of the final illustration before the color? Sure, why not? That's called a value study. You can do that. Uh, that's how I trained myself uh, when I didn't know what I was doing with paint. I would do a black and white study before I would do a color study, no doubt. Thank you, Ravi, I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining. So right now what we have is a very safe, light landscape. So we need to be a little bit bolder now, okay? And now we need to put in some darks. But uh, let's, let's, let's just kind of go for it, all right? So I'm gonna start over here, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm blocking, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to uh, block the whole drawing. Uh, so I'm gonna just, Think about how this tree, I recently watched the other live sessions. First time caught me, uh, caught you live. Thank you so much, Kristen. Christian. Uh, really appreciate that. Okay, now my pencil stroke, I, I'm gonna do a different pencil stroke now. So I, I don't wanna go too detailed with this, but just to, you know, sometimes when you guys are drawing the figure or hair on a portrait or trees, Sometimes the detail is right on the edge. It doesn't need to be totally in the middle all the time. It could really be on the edge of things, okay? Uh, now I'm noticing this, this paper is very different than my Strathmore pad. It's, it's softer, the paper, and my pencil is not coming off of, it's not, the paper's not acting like rough sandpaper is really what I'm trying to say. 
and it, it would take me a while to build up my darks. So that's going to be my quick tree. And hopefully you guys can't hear Truffles snoring, but she's snoring and Truffles will join the live stream in, in a little while. Um, so now I've got a value that's a little bit darker. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to kind of zigzag a little bit with little kind of shadows of the grass over to this other tree. Now I can get in the trunk. Okay. And I'm going to start to shade the shadow side. This is the shadow side of that pine tree and the lights coming from top left. So I want to keep the left side of the tree lighter. Yeah, she's a sleeper truffs. She has to be around a human being. I have two other dogs. Chloe is another French bulldog. She's downstairs. She doesn't have to be around humans all the time, but truffles cannot not be around a human. Now I'm going to um, put in the local value of this pine tree. I'll do the details after. Right now, I'm. this is called blocking in. Okay, so I just kind of block that in. Now, not too much detail. It kind of just looks like a little blob. And now I'm going to get the shadow side of this tree here. And notice I'm not going as dark because it's you're trying to create that environmental distance. So how do you do that? You do that with low contrast in the midground, even lower contrast in the background. So as we progress down this tree, there's actually two of them right next to each other. It has a little bit of a cast shadow, so I'm going to create a little layer and maybe something like that. And this is just the local value of those trees kind of going down. There's lots and lots of little layers there in the background. So this is actually part of the runway that I see there. And I'm going to just block this in as a low contrast tree. And now what I could also do is a little horizontal pencil stroke. I don't want to go darker than that. And I'm just going to create a gradation. Good. Create a gradation in the sky. And clouds have an underplane. So notice in the photo, the clouds, we're talking about light and shade here, should have the same light and shade as the trees. So the clouds would have the shadow shape over here. Now it's super light super light and we need to save some space on the paper for the white charcoal and we're going to use the white charcoal pencil lasso i'm just doing a little bit of the shading of that now what i could do next is go back to let me get a sharper pencil and let's put in uh, some more value over here with the tall grass so i want the grass over here to be darker not as dark as the trees but darker. Okay, so get rid of the tone of the paper. Just get rid of it and put in a value. Let's just get rid of the paper value. Put in this light middle tone, middle tone type thing. Good, 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 good. Now, what I want to do here is just... Uh, This is really good, good, good practice for you to do is to do a horizontal line. Frame it out. Now, in my studio, on my pad, piece of paper, I should say, this is level. On the video monitor, it is not. Let's frame it out. Frame it out. Awesome. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this Bristol brush just to speed things along. And I want to just get rid of the pure value of the pad paper because it's kind of like a, a beigey tone. So I'm just softening that. I'm pushing the pencil into the nook and crannies of the tooth of the paper, just like that. 
This will enable me also, as we progress with the flowers, to start to draw with my eraser. Okay, I'm going to do this gradation over here with the brush. Cool. Good. Now, what we have is an extremely soft landscape drawn. Okay, it's very soft. And now it's my job to start to make it a little bit more edgy. So edges are what create uh, environment, okay? So the, the general rule is that you want to have, especially on a sunny day, so it's a really sunny day, and things are a little bit crisper on a sunny day. Now, I, I talk about this next thing in terms of environment. What is environment? And when I talk to this with my students, I can see their eyes glaze over in the classroom. And I'm like, okay, let me just stop talking about this right now. But this is key to environment. So what creates soft edges and what creates hard edges in a landscape? Uh, it's particles of dust in the air or particles of moisture. Okay. Uh, yeah, do a ton of landscape. Uh, uh, thumbnails of, of landscapes. I love that. This is kind of a, a bigger version of, of a thumbnail. It's, it's six inches by four inches. That's not really a big piece of art. But getting back to my point, uh, particles of dust would make things in the background softer because dust is kind of clouding the crispiness of the things in the background. Or if it's a foggy day or a humid day in the summer, particles of moisture would make things in the background get a little fuzzier, a little bit softer. This is a bright, sunny day. So things in the background over there look really crisp. You could use that to your advantage. You could manipulate that. But the concept is that you want to make things in the foreground have a sharper edge. Okay? So I'm going to go... And I'm being very stylized with the way that I'm drawing the pine tree, just because it would take me a year and a day to kind of do this. I can't really even see. There's some branches. I'm going to put in some more darks over here. So notice I'm manipulating my pencil stroke direction. Okay, manipulate the pencil stroke direction. Different pencil strokes equal different textures. Okay, very important for you to understand that concept. Uh, people ask me all the time, how do I draw hair? Or how would I draw that leather jacket? Or how do I get the highlight on that vase in my still life? It's pencil stroke direction combined with hard or soft edges. That's how you get texture. That's how you get tooth. So I'm going darker here with this foreground tree. I'm trying to do different pencil stroke directions. And then over here, we have the tall grass. So now I'm going to a different, longer pencil stroke direction. I'm going to do some tall grass over here. Notice I'm working dark first on the left side of my drawing. So it's for smudging purposes. If I did this first with the really dark, I, I wouldn't want to. Um, hey, Michael, how are you? Yeah, the brush gives it a lot of depth. Hi, Dawn. Now, uh, just kind of very stylized with that. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know who those people are. Um, so let's keep going here. Let's just shade. Let's put a little bit of tone over here. Now, let me resharpen this pencil because I'm noticing with this uh, paper, which is really interesting, it's so different. This type of paper is the type of paper that uh, you really would want to uh, super PK. You got it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, but the one thing I don't get is the golden ratio. The golden ratio is this mathematical equation that you use to place things on your piece of paper in uh, a pleasing way. 
Okay. Now the golden ratio, how do I do this without screwing this piece up? I could have put this pine tree in the area of the golden ratio. So if I was going to do the golden ratio, I, I kind of just do it by eye. I'm not going to sit here and do some mathematical equation. I would say that, uh, this, yeah, uh, this should have been where the mathematical equation is for the golden ratio right over here. Okay. And, um, so well, I'm just going to kind of shade and I'm not going to worry about the golden ratio in this piece, but it's just a mathematical equation for placing something that is pleasing to the viewer's eye. Nothing more, nothing less. And if you Google that, you'll find the mathematical equation and you can kind of just put it in right over there. So I'm, you see what I'm doing now? I'm going a little bit dark over here and uh, the texture I'll do on the top, but I don't want to go too dark with that. Let's see here. Yep, there's all those little pine needles. I used to have these pine trees in my backyard growing up. And uh, they, when they grow in the spring, it looks like they're kind of giving you the finger. <laughs> it's so very funny. Um, the things that we see in nature is pretty crazy. So now we've got that. And I'm going to go a little darker over here. Good. And a little darker over here with that cast shadow. Now let's do the tall grass. Good. So tall grass here in the foreground. And notice I'm just doing like this random brush stroke. Uh, it's a little crazy. Your eyes can get dizzy when, when you look at that. Now I want to go back to the zigzag. So I'm doing my zig here to this tree, to this tree. You don't want to make it look so obvious. So maybe I'll go a little bit darker over here. Okay. And then I want to have my zag, zig, zag. And that zag is going to go to this other piece of foliage over here. I'm going to go a little bit darker. I got to be careful with that. And we can do some, see, I'm going low contrast over here. I'm not pressing down hard with this. And I want to make sure that this is not as tall as the tree to the left of it. So I want to create the illusion of depth through size. So this I could actually even make even taller to create the illusion of depth through size. Big in the foreground, things should be bigger in the foreground, especially in a landscape. And things should be smaller in the midground and smaller still in the background. A very uh, simple tool that goes a long way to creating depth in your landscape pieces. So I'm just going to go a little bit more over here with an up and down pencil stroke. So different things, different values. I want to make sure that my ground is um, a different value than the sky. Can't tell you how important that is. So I want the ground to be a different value than the sky. So now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a very quick horizontal pencil stroke direction. Okay, so mo most of what I've been doing so far is laying in tone. It's not so much that I'm doing all this detail. Um, people think detail before they think value. Values like are so, so very important. It, it really is what makes your artwork your artwork. It's the value structure. And I see people trying to draw a landscape. I see it all the time on in the Critique Gallery at Drawing Tutorials Online. Uh, that they'll do a landscape drawing and they'll do the out. I, I love outlines, so I'm not saying anything bad about outlines. They'll outline the objects, they'll put a little texture in, but they don't put value in. Texture is different than value. Okay, value is what you, makes your images strong and pop out. Okay, so now I'm doing the middle tone. When I look at the trees in my photo reference, over here. Now, in the description right below the video where it says show more, you can download this photo over at my blog. So just click on the link if you want this photo and you can download it uh, by just dragging it to your desktop. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to go too crazy with the texture on that background layer of trees. 
I wouldn't mind creating a little bit more depth, which I'm going to do in a moment here with my eraser. I should go a little bit darker and a little bit crisper because this tree right now is getting a little lost. So let's make it pop out just a little bit more. And then we have the perspective of the trees right behind that. So we can create depth. Remember, shapes of things should have different values. We can do a little bit of some smaller pine trees over here. These things are just kind of all grown wild. And over here, we can go darker. Cool. Okay. Now, I think I just need to go a little bit more with some tall grass. And I'm not really looking at the photo reference that much. I could really study it. But this is just a sketch, not a finished piece. All right, cool. Now, let's take a, an assessment. I'm looking at it on the monitor. It's all right. I don't hate it. Uh, famous last words. That's usually what I say when I look at the finished artwork that I've done. I don't hate it. <laughs> How positive is that? It's okay, but I don't hate it. Now, let's have some fun. Uh, let's... I still feel as though I need more value. So let me do it with the brush. The brush is this magical thing that pushes the pencil into the paper. Uh, when you use a photo reference, do you always print it out? Okay. So for, I would say, 90%, maybe 80% of my art career, which spans 30 years, I started my art career in... in um, 1990 when I graduated from college. So out of the 30 years that I've been doing art professionally, 80% of that time I've printed the photos out. It hasn't really been until the last couple of years, actually the last four years, perhaps three years, that I've set my studio up where here's my Cintiq screen that's covered with foam board and my drawing pad, and then I have an iMac that I'm looking straight ahead at. And I like that so much better. I have a great printer, um, but for speed, uh, I totally um, like the computer because I can just bring the image into Photoshop or to Apple's preview, enlarge it, I can change it. And right now, I'm looking at the landscape photo in Photoshop. So I can mani manipulate it. I can do so many things to it. So as of right now, what I feel is best for me is working directly from my iMac monitor. What worked for me in the past was always working from photos, okay? Uh, but this saves a lot of money. It saves a lot of time. For a while there, thank you, Aura. I heard what you said. I appreciate that. Aurora, actually, not Aura, um, although you're one in the same uh, with your names. So... Yeah, it, it, what happens when you do art over the span of 30 years, and that doesn't incorporate college and, and all the years before that making my portfolio, to get into college is that you go through phases and you mature and you change and you what you thought was gospel when you were in your 20s, when you're in your 40s, you don't think that's gospel anymore. And what used to really excite you when you were 28 years old you might think is pathetic when you're 48 years old. And you change. And you, you also, as an artist, you go through phases. And you might go through a phase for a year where you're like, oh, I'm working from my iPad, and I've got my reference from my iPad, and, and I really liked uh, it working that way. And then you might go to printing things out, and you might like that. So my reference is right in front of me on an iMac. Okay. And um, it's really great to work this way. I, I've been doing much better with my photo reference on the iMac as, as of late. I, I feel as though my drawings have gotten so much better when I draw from my photo reference that is on my iMac in front of my face. You know, what I, I, I've noticed is for many years, I always had my reference to the left. And now I like my reference looking up, straight ahead up. Somebody's trying to call me. Um, 
Okay. Yep. Let's just put a little bit more tone over here. And in, in a couple of seconds, give me, give me uh, two more minutes of putting a little bit more value down before we get to the ice cream part. So this is kind of uh, the broccoli part of doing a drawing. This is called eat your vegetables before you have dessert. And what does that mean? It means you need to take the time to shade in a solid way. And it's time consuming, especially with this little point, right? You need to take the time to put down value before you use the white charcoal pencil or before you start to use your eraser to pull values out, okay? And you'll see how important this is in a moment when I start to use the little eraser to pull out some of the flowers. You need the tone. The tone is the entirety of a landscape piece, okay? Without tone, you're not gonna have these big trees and uh, you're not gonna see the difference between the land and the sky. Yeah, a, a laptop, I only have a lot, so I find, yeah. I, I mean, I'm in the business of having an online business. Uh, I've been doing drawing tutorials online for uh, 12 years now. We just had our 12th anniversary, which was August 8th. I remember I launched uh, the website on August 8th and that, that same day, I think like 70 or 80 people had signed up. It was like the, a day that really changed my life for the better. And I have building up, been building up equipment since then. I've gone through four computers, uh, actually five computers. And so I'm at the point now where I have, I'm able to, you know, I didn't buy all these computers at, in one year. I bought them over a 12 year period. So I have this iMac that I use just for filming. I have that iMac over there just for tasks uh, like uh, web work, email work, stuff like that. And I used to use that iMac for this stuff, but video destroys Apple computers. I, I, I could attest to that because I've destroyed quite a few Apple computers from video. Video just chews them up. And I have thousands upon thousands of photo reference as well. So you, if you just have one computer and you have an online business, it's kind of like a recipe for a disaster. So uh, your goal would be to build up and get a second monitor, okay? Because the monitor is gonna really, really help you. So let me just look over some of these comments. Hey, Jeff, good to see you, man. Hope you're doing good. Hi, Anna, glad you joined us. Jonathan Phillips. Yeah, details. Can you draw still life by pencil? Sure, absolutely. I could do that. All right, so I think that that's enough with the blocking in right now. Let me see. We are at 47 minutes. So it took me 47, 45 minutes to put that tone down on the paper while I'm chatting here. So the drawing's six and a quarter. Yep. And it is roughly four inches tall. Hey, Camillo. Now, I'm going to use this uh, Dion Mars. Yeah, Vivian was one of my students, and she was a wonderful student to have in my classroom. Very positive uh, girl. She was awesome. Very talented. I have not seen Has Been Hotel, but I'll definitely look for it. All right, Jeff, man, uh, do the best that you can. I'll say a prayer for you. I have such trouble with mark making. I get overwhelmed when there is more than maybe two textures. Don't know how to condense all the information. So that's a great question, okay? Hey, On, how are you, man? Uh, you are the dude. You do so many cool drawings. I miss having you in class. It totally sucks that SVA is going all digital. It totally sucks. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, texture. So here's a simple thing for you to remember, Kai, is more texture in the foreground, less texture in the background. That's just a very, very simple rule. 
people will uh, go crazy with texture everywhere, and then their pieces are really flat. It's because when things go miles and miles away, we're talking about landscapes right now, when things go miles and miles away, they just get out of focus. And there's the particles of dust, particles of moisture thing. So just that's a simple rule for you to have. Um, Seridan, oh, God, I can't say your name. C, I'm going to say. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. So th that's, a, that's a really simple concept. Keep things in the background, low contrast, low texture, simple shapes. Now, let's, let's have some fun here. Let's use this Mono Zero eraser, okay, the skinny one. And I use this little razor blade to shape it on a nice diagonal. Okay. Now, I also have this Mono Zero eraser, which is the square one, the rectangular one. And notice it has this clip. I cut the clip off on this one. Do you see? Because that clip rotates the eraser. Uh, and it's so annoying. So if you buy one of these, use the razor blade. Don't cut your fingers off. Cut that off or get a knife, cut it off. And it's so much more user friendly. And it comes with these kind of a little replacement things. Um, this is replacements for the rectangular. And these are the replacements for um, the little circular eraser, which is what I'm going to be using right now. It's really beneficial. So if I wanted to now, I've got some smudged tooth and texture. So I can use this eraser to start now to pull out the flowers just like that okay and this is why you want to work for hours or an hour or a half an hour to put the tone down because then you could come on in here with now I, I'm not gonna copy the photo reference with the flowers I have never used an electric eraser so I don't have much history with them but um, I swear by the electric pencil sharpener so I'm, remember in the beginning of the video, we talked about the zigzag. So I'm using the zig right here to create motion. And now I'm going to do the zag, but it's not going to be flowers. I'm just going to kind of maybe this is a top plane of the grass. See, now I switch to horizontal. So these are individual little flowers. They're weeds, okay? Individual little ones. And maybe we can do a couple little ones over here. So this helps with the texture. So texture, and then in the, fore, in the background, shape. Simple shape. Now, there's a lot of little flowers over here, but they're all going to blur together. And I'm trying to do my zag now. I could have gone a little bit better with the zag. Zig zag zig so there's a little road over here a little path that might be the edge of the runway because remember this is over at grumman in calverton it has an abandoned runway where they used to make i think it was f-17s or something like that okay now uh yeah so now we can create little nooks there's a little nook over here A little area over here of background land and this eraser works beautifully for this see how that works now we have that little area we could create some negative space with this eraser so negative space is going to help the trees look like trees there's a little negative space over here there's some negative spaces over here. So if you gradually build up your tone with any pencil, a 2B, a, a HB, the color race, charcoal, if you gradually build it up, then it's easy to erase. But if you immediately go on in 
and you start to press down hard immediately, it's going to be hard to erase. So now I'm going to just kind of go like that and uh, brush off the eraser crumbs. And I don't like the foreground grass. Where did I put that pencil? Seriously? Okay. So I want to just, uh, this looks too equidistant the way that I'm doing this. So I'm going to just, let me get a sharper pencil. And just look at the grass. There's some dark stems to the flowers. I'm on like a open field flower kick lately. I long to move to a place uh, that's kind of semi-deserted with big open fields. I mean, I have a huge tree farm behind my house, which is awesome. But the tree farmer is like a... <laughs> he, he used to let us walk on it in the tree farm when we first moved in because there was no fence. Uh, now there's fence everywhere, and so you can't go on the tree farm. But it was awesome because there's a big hill. You can go up on the hill. You look down at all the, the trees grown in the tree farm. It looked like somewhere in like Northern California. It was just gorgeous. Okay, so just a little bit more with some details over here. Now, don't have all of the grass going up and down. Put a couple, uh, some slices of grass, flicks of grass that are kind of tilted over. That will show it a little bit more natural. Now, I, I'm going to just uh, go get Truffs because she's snoring a lot. And uh, she's going to draw uh, just a little bit before we go to the white charcoal. Give me a moment. Come on, Truffs. Time for you to draw. Truffs wasn't feeling good today. She didn't eat her breakfast. What's going on, Truffs? Huh? Why aren't you eating your breakfast? Did you have a rough night last night? You all right? You feeling a little warm. You ready to draw? You want to draw a little bit, Truffs? No, nobody's home yet. So let's get this pencil. Let's get you to draw a little bit here. Okay, so there's, yeah. So let's just shade a little bit in the sky and a uh, little bit on the tree. What do you think, Truffs? Is it coming out okay? A uh, little bit over here on the grass. No, you're not feeling this one? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go put you back on your bed here. Man, she's like a thousand degrees. Oh my God. Okay, so before we get to the uh, white charcoal pencil, am I covered? I'm covered in hair. I, st I just can't stop grinding technical skills for years. I just can't can't just create art because I'm never good enough. All right, so listen, Lane, I, Lane Meyer. Lane, there's two different, pe people get trapped in practicing techniques. And I, I, I love um, YouTube. I spend a lot of time on YouTube just looking at old videos at night. Like my, my fun time is between like 9 p.m. then 11 p.m. before I go to bed. I just sit there on Instagram, YouTube, look around that stuff. And I, I love it. But the problem with everything that's good, there's a bad. So YouTube is great. It's one of the best inventions ever. But it's also bad because you see so many different artists doing so many different techniques and you want to practice those techniques. But if you just always practice drawing te techniques, you're like a hamster on the wheel and you feel like you're never getting anywhere. So you need to divide your time up. Number one, to time for practice, but then time to build your body of work. If you are not creating your own body of work, your portfolio, whatever that may be, you're not going to be fulfilled. If you're just practicing how to draw surface planes or how to draw, you know, uh, perspective or how to draw, you know, the skeleton or how to draw the line of action. Like there's, and how to draw the angles. Like th there are so many different drawing techniques that you could practice. And when you first learn them, sure, they're fun. 
But if I've seen people practicing the same drawing techniques for like five, six, seven years, and you need to, at some point, um, get away from practice and build your body of work. So when I was in college, I would get assignments and I would practice the painting techniques and I would do all that. But then when I graduated from college, I had to build my own portfolio and that gave me massive amounts of fulfillment because I felt like I was getting somewhere. Now, before I worked on my portfolio pieces, I would practice for about a half an hour. I would copy George Bridgman drawings. I would copy old master's drawings. I, I would maybe, you know, do stuff like that. Uh, so if you just live in practice mode, it's not fulfilling. That would be like a professional athlete always being in training camp, but there's no games. The game is the portfolio. So let, let me just um, clean up these clouds. And um, let's just have some fun here with, with the white charcoal pencil. Why not? It's Saturday. Um, white charcoal pencil. So I love this brand. It's a cheap brand. It's called Generals. <laughs> It's just such a funny name. It sounds like a car dealership or something like that. I think it is a car dealership. General's Cars for Sale. Um, thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. Animal portraits. Animal portraits. I love drawing animals, but they take forever with the fur and all that. Yeah, get the Mono Zero. It, it helps. I got mine on Amazon. So now let, let's just do a little bit with the clouds. So different textures. I got hair all over me. White hair, black shirt, not a good idea to pick up the dog. So I'm going to, how is this paper? Again, this is the first time I'm working on this paper. I've got to put the link to the paper in the description of the video. It's not there. This is the paper for those of you who joined us late. It's the Stonehenge colors put out by Legion. Uh, it's the first time I ever worked on this paper. And they have, it's just different shades of yellows and creams. And there's like one warm gray. I, I hate ordering paper from Amazon because it always comes damaged. This one came a little damaged. Um, I bought paper from Blick, uh, expensive illustration board, and they packed it like it was a bomb. And it came like perfect. No dog ears on the corners. Uh, thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. Yeah, go to the general and save some time. <laughs> uh, Ling Yu. Um, at this point in my life, going outside to paint landscapes, I don't do that. Uh, I, I think one time I did it. One time. I uh, was at, I'll tell this little story and then we'll get into the white charcoal. It was for, I, I, when I went to the School of Visual Arts, I lived at home and I commuted on Long Island Railroad into Manhattan, but there was one semester that I was like, cool. And I lived at my aunt's apartment down on Fulton Street, right near the Brooklyn Bridge, near Pier 17 in Manhattan. Uh, and I remember the first day I got there, I went out onto her outside porch. Uh, it was an apartment building. I think it was the 12th floor. And I painted the Brooklyn Bridge. That, that was the only time I ever painted anything outside. So unfortunately, at this point, no, I don't do that. I like, uh, I'm a big user of photography. And I, photography is a big, huge aspect in my creative process. And I don't feel it's cheating at all to draw from photographs. I feel it's a necessary evil. Uh, right now, it's the only thing that I've got because right now there are no models because there is no college. And it, it kind of sucks because um, the college is going all virtual and I can't get into the school to photograph any new models. And it's, it's just a terrible situation. So just trying to have some fun here. Some horizontal clouds. Where is the light coming from? Let's do a stray one up over here so it's not so 
over the top with the perspective. Christiana, I hope I said that name right. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it sounds really romantic. Everybody has like their thing that they like. Some people love the uh, plain air painting outside. My thing is is figure drawing. That that's what really jazzes me, and I love drawing from the model. I I love landscapes too, but I, I'd rather if I had a choice to draw a landscape outside or draw the model in the classroom, I'd pick the model in the classroom every single day of the week. Now let let's spread um, the white charcoal around, and we're gonna do it on this little path, this little perspective path. We're gonna do it on some distant little areas over there. We're going to do it on some little flowers in the midground. Should do a horizontal stroke. Okay, the oh, that one that is to my that is anatomytools.com. Okay, I have no affiliation with them. They're high quality. I don't even, I haven't visited that website in many, many years, but when I started doing the anatomy lessons at my website, I'm like, I got to buy these things. Uh, they're, they're huge. And, and uh, I stare at them occasionally. So I, I don't have this, this one. I dropped it and I uh, ruined the fingers. But yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden we have like this monster in the middle of the landscape. Ah. <laughs> So, yeah, this anatomy, I think I'm going crazy. I've been in this studio way too long. Uh, this anatomy tools guy, we've detached his penis. It's somewhere in, in my draw. Uh, it, it's just an incredible resource. And to have this in your studio and to draw it, if you want to master the figure, uh, you got you to gotta get this. Okay, this is their first generation. I like it better than the female, I think. And then these things come off. Okay, we have a detachable arm now, and you can see. So, yeah, anatomytools.com. Now, I don't know what these things, how much they cost now. You might be able to get one on eBay that's used, uh, but the guy one is great. Okay, it's really, he's really good. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I know exactly where you're talking about in Kings Park. I used to play ice hockey there at Superior Ice Rink. Yeah, that's right near the expressway. Uh, the That area is about 35 minutes doing about 77 miles an hour from my home. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know. I know. All right. So let me just, let's have some fun here. Let's just do uh, some of the flowers. Let me resharpen. I think I'm going a little crazy as of late. I, uh, I need to do some planning. So press down harder here in the foreground. Just going over what I've erased. We don't want to make that look too contrived. Got our little zigzag. Cool, man. All right, you should, if the police inspector is there, you should definitely arrest Craig. You should definitely arrest him immediately. Put the man in cuffs. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. I, I don't know how much longer I'm going to go with this, uh, but that, that's the concept with um, the landscape drawing. Now, if this was going to be a drawing that I'm going to spend hours on, uh, God, I'm just going to, 
where am I going to put my time? Like, I'm going to put my time maybe in the foliage and the edges of the foliage. And put, you know, you, you don't want to just have like this soft, fluffy thing. You need to have some kind of trunk and uh, branches so we can start to do some of that stuff. <laughs> Not sure if he's on the shift, yeah. Make a citizen's arrest. I don't know if they have that there. So I'm going to just play with where the tree... Okay, so we have our cast shadow. I'm not really digging this thing. Again, I had these things in my backyard growing up, and they just look like they're kind of giving you the finger. It's weird. Thank you, Anna. I'm going to see you on um, Tuesday at 11, right? You can send me some beautiful work. And let's just go. I'm going to just spend a couple more minutes on this. And uh, just putting in a couple more darks. So remember, look at your photo reference more than you look at your drawing. Yeah, no, the inspector's wife does not have just two dots for nostrils. So just this is just a side technique for everyone listening to the live stream. When you draw nostrils, do not use Mars black. Do not use ivory black. Do not use any black, okay? Do not draw black nostrils. That's just a very, uh, that's, a, that's a, a side note to the landscape. Uh, I don't know what is the least sexiest part of the body, um, the elbow or the nostrils, but Craig loves to bring us to the nostrils, and I'm going to leave it there. Okay, let's just kind of get the edge. Remember, uh, texture on the edges of things, so I'm trying to get, I don't know how successful I am here uh, with the texture on this thing, but... Uh, yeah, we don't use black nostrils because uh, contrast is where the viewer's eye looks first. So some people, when they paint portraits, will make the viewer unintentionally look at the nostrils. So it just it's the same concept with what we're doing here in this landscape. And that is we're going softer in the background. So if I was going to pick a value for the nostrils, it would be that. It would not be that. Okay. So let's see. Let me just push this for another minute or so. And we get that little zigzag thing. I could come back in with the eraser and just um, erase out some little negative spaces here. But I think we're just about done, guys. This was fun, I got to admit. And I'll do a quick little recap for you. So this is what I like to do at the end of my... Um, landscapes. I like to press down hard on the border so it acts like a mat or a frame. Great practice. I'm not really feeling this tree over here on the left. Yeah, that's funny. God, truffs, really? Snoring is out of control. There's um, my other French bulldog, Chloe. When we first got her, she we did this operation. It's called stenonic nares or something like that, where they actually open up the dog's nose to help them breathe more. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's very humane to the dog. It helps them. 
And we didn't do it on Truffs because when we got Truffs, she had an ammonia. And she was a really sick dog, so we couldn't do anything like that when she was younger. But she needs it more than Chloe. Yeah, I'm starting to ruin it, so we're going to leave it. Let me... Um, Let's do some grass with the eraser. And I want to soften some of this just a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm going a little too dark here. So it'll give me the if so there's no screw ups. If you screw up, um, you use it to your advantage and you pull lights out if you've gone too dark. Yeah. All right, guys. So how do you know when you're done? When you do something and you don't like it and uh, you're already an hour and 15 minutes in. So this little sketch is done. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching me today. So let's recap this and talk about all the different techniques that we've spoken about. So we started right in the middle with our horizon line. I don't care about these rules about the middle. I put it right in the middle. So screw the rules. All right. Some teachers will say never put anything in the middle. That's fine. But I, I I'm, don't follow so many rules so much. So we started with our horizon line. And then we said, um, let's get in this big bush, this big tree, this big foliage on the left, big things in the foreground, mid-sized things in the mid-ground, small things in the background. And then we talked about the zig and the zag. We talked about the perspective of the lay of the land, find where our horizon line is and our vanishing point, which is right here. We talked about there are multiple vanishing points on one horizon line. So the clouds are coming down in perspective to another vanishing point. We talked about having layers of foliage and these little areas of openness, um, little kind of nooks and crannies in the landscape. I didn't do a great job with it, but you know I can do a lot of little trees, things uh, in the background over there. We talked about different things, different values. So the ground must be uh, darker, in my opinion, than the sky. We talked about having a gradation up in the sky. Uh, we really spent 80% of the time of this drawing with putting value down before we even thought about using the white charcoal pencil or the eraser. And uh, yeah, so I, I know I'm missing a lot of things there, but I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. If you liked this video, please give it a heads up. Uh, if you want to share it, that would be helpful as well. And if you want to know when... I post videos totally. Um, click on the little bell for notifications. Uh, if you want to f get emails from me uh, when I am going live, uh, and if you want to get a free course, go to the link in the show more part, the description of this video that says members.drawingtutorialsonline.com, and you can sign up uh, for my email list there. I, I don't spam anybody with, hey, uh, I'm having a sale, you know, I don't, I don't, I might do that once or twice cause I am a business, but I don't do it all the time. So I'm not going to spam you with all this salesy stuff. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys so, so very much for joining me. This little landscape, I, I could do these forever. They're so much fun. Um, and again, if I take this off, um, and then the other thing we talked about was the three values. So this is just a little Stonehenge paper. And I'll show you uh, very quickly here before I, I cut out what I was working on yesterday and what I'm going to work on after the video. Let's see here. So that's the foam board that my pad goes on. If I can get... Ah, probably demonetize the video now that I'm showing a nude. YouTube loves to do that. So I, this is what I was drawing right... Uh, yesterday just as a, a sketch and I need to finish the figure so this is just a complete different animal than the landscape so for me the landscapes much more tonal okay this is very 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 tonal figure for me is much more linear 
and uh, I'll, I could make it more tonal. That just takes hours. So I just want to share with you um, what I was working on. So guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, I appreciate all of your kind words. And uh, see Morsha, thank you so much. Christiane, Chris, yeah, whoa, that's a tough one. Craig, uh, I just use this one, Craig. Yeah, has a little tooth to it. I didn't love it, but it was cool. Thank you, Ismael, thank you. Kai, thank you. Chuck, thank you for joining. Aura, thank you for joining. Michael, appreciate that. S Sam, thank you. Nancy. <laughs> we'll give Truffs a pat. Camillo, thank you. Marie, I appreciate you joining us today. Say hi to the cat. Sandy, thank you. Appreciate that, Sandy. Chris, thank you for joining. Frankie J, I'm going to move down south one of these days. Definitely go uh, on some moonshine runs with my challenger in the woods, kicking up some rocks. Uh, that'd be really fun. Fernando, thank you, man. Oh, God, that name. Lily Miss Random. Random. There we go. God, my eyes. Anna, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll see you, um, Anna, on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. And thanks again uh, for watching. And I'll talk to you soon. Be good.